Thank you so much uh, to everyone for being here today. And a big thank you to the SAIT team for hosting us here at their amazing facility in downtown Calgary. I uh, also want to give a big shout out to the team at SAIT here. They're relaunching the restaurant here in January. So thank you for their patience during this pandemic. We can't wait to see what the students are going to be uh, dishing out here in the next uh, little while. So this is an exciting day for Alberta. We launched the Investment and Growth Fund in our last budget. And this is the announcement today is the first project to receive funding from the Investment and Growth Fund. For those of you that don't have background on this fund, this is a site competition fund. So a project could go to British Columbia, it could go south of the border, go anywhere in the world. And we want to make sure we bring that deal to Alberta. So not only do we have the competitive advantage of the job creation tax cut, reducing red tape in Alberta by one third, making sure we're efficient in everything that we do as a government here in our province, and just having that Alberta on an entrepreneurial spirit. What we've done here with this uh, investment and growth fund is enhance our competitiveness. We took a deep dive into jurisdictions like Texas, Colorado, you know, cities like Pittsburgh that have reinvented themselves and made sure that we had the best possible strategies going forward for Alberta to diversify our economy, create jobs, and just create value for taxpayers as well. So in the first intake that we had with the Investment and Growth Fund, it's been even more successful than we initially thought when we put forward this fund. We have four projects. You're going to hear about one of them today. The other three you're going to have to wait for as we roll them out. But it's having capital investments of around $845 million. We're talking about almost 2,000 jobs in construction and hundreds of permanent jobs here in the province of Alberta. And let me also highlight this. The focus of these is going to be in providing resiliency to our supply chains. We're talking about value add for our agricultural sector. And you're going to hear about just the exciting science-driven agricultural product project that's being launched here in the city of Calgary right now with the first recipient of the Investment and Growth Fund, Greenleaf. And now also just to highlight the success of what they've done and the innovation that's there. We're talking about people that they're going to be hiring with PhDs, engineers, just the cutting edge when it comes to everything when it comes to vertical farming. And the one thing, I had an opportunity to talk with, with Jeff, the representative, you're going to hear more from him here in a moment. But what, the thing that impressed me the most is that water is a huge issue for Alberta long term. And the only true water that is leaving this facility is in the vegetables. They recycle the water time and time again. They've had purification processes. This is the definition of when it comes to ESG, providing further food resiliency and supply chains as well. And it's displacing production out of California and Mexico for consumers here in Canada, for the west of our, sorry, for Western Canada here. So again, with no further ado, I want to introduce my colleague, Nate Horner, our Minister of Agriculture, to provide some further comments. But this is an exciting day for an Alberta, and it also goes to show that our strategy here with Alberta's recovery plan is working to create jobs for Albertans. And there was a Financial Post article that kind of mentioned, uh, not my words, but theirs, Alberta's got its swagger back, and it's encouraging to see these types of investments coming into Alberta. Minister Horner. Thank you very much, Minister Schweitzer. This Investment and Growth Fund grant supports Alberta's priority agri-food sector. And today's announcement is due, in part, to the robust investment attraction program at agriculture, forestry, and rural economic development. This announcement also represents an important, an important partnership in action between Alberta's government, the Invest Alberta Corporation, and industry. Goodleaf's plans to build a vertical farm to grow leafy green products year-round in the Calgary region shows our industry's commitment to innovative solutions for a secure and sustainable food supply. About 90% of the leafy greens consumed in Canada are currently imported. So this expansion means that fresh, local leafy greens can be grown in Alberta by Albertans. We all know that farming in Alberta has its challenges and Goodleaf's state-of-the-art vertical farms are equipped to grow greens 365 days a year, creating a consistent and reliable food source for Albertans. This is an important step towards providing local alternatives in our produce aisles, which are highly dominated by imports from the southern U.S. or Mexico. This project represents a significant investment in Alberta's value-added sector. Agriculture, forestry, and rural economic development set out a goal to attract $1.4 billion in value-added investment and create 2,000 jobs by 2023. In just over two years, we've reached $886 million in investments in 105 projects, 
63% of the goal and surpassed the job creation goal with more than 2,128 jobs. The Goodleaf expansion will help us meet these investment goals, encourage economic diversif diversification in the province and create good jobs for Albertans. Looking at the bigger picture, as Alberta emerges from the COVID-19 pandemic, we're focused on creating a dynamic economic future for our province. Alberta's recovery plan is about getting people back to work, building infrastructure and diversifying the provincial economy. We will be looking at the agri-food sector to help lead that recovery and growth and this project contributes to our progress. Congratulations to Good Life on this grant. Good luck in your construction and welcome to Alberta. Thank you. I'd, I'd now invite uh, Rick Christian, CEO of Invest Alberta, to make a few comments. Thank you, Minister, and good afternoon, and welcome, everyone. It's an exciting today, day today for both the province of Alberta as well as the city of Calgary as we make this announcement. Invest Alberta, with our own team members located in key cities around the world, continues to promote Alberta for investors as an ideal location to invest, work, and live. This year, Invest Alberta, in, in concert with our partners like Calgary Economic Development, has helped attract more than $7 billion in new investment programs that will lead to an additional 4,500 jobs here for Albertans. The agri-food sector is one of our core sectors, with Alberta having a global reputation for safe, high-quality agriculture and agri-food products. This constantly evolving sector needs to continue to grow through smart investment attraction programs. The new Investment and Growth Fund is a good example of this. It allowed us to welcome established companies to Alberta and help them expand, create jobs, and plant seeds of innovation. Goodleaf's modern technologies not only make Alberta more competitive in this space, our work with Goodleaf also calls for expanded partnerships with post-secondary education, allowing for all of us to expand the sector further. Congratulations to Jeff McKinnon and the Goodleaf team and we look forward to working collaborating with you on our continued growth right here in Alberta. I'll introduce Jeff. Thanks, Rick. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I really appreciate everyone attending today. My name is Jeff McKinnon. Uh, I'm really, really excited to be here this week as a representative of Goodleaf Firms as we announce our expansion into Western Canada and more specifically into Calgary. Um, Goodleaf is a, a Canadian born and raised indoor agriculture company that uses uh, vertical farming technology to be able to produce uh, clean, healthy, nutritious, leafy green lettuce products 365 days a year in the local market. Um, the vertical farming, for those that aren't familiar, from the outside it looks like a standard warehouse industrial space. On the inside, it's, it's sort of outfitted with uh, a lot of technology. We, we use height and stack technology to be able to optimize uh, output. And, um, and from that perspective, we're able to, as Minister Schweitzer said, reduce water uh, consumption. Uh, we would use roughly 95% less water than traditional agriculture. Um, so this, our state-of-the-art facilities were actually founded in Nova Scotia in 2015 was our first commercial launch. Uh, we subsequently built a facility in Guelph, Ontario and launched in 2019 and are really excited to be continuing that uh, Canadian expansion uh, here in Calgary. Um, the, uh, as we strive to be a global leader in the space, uh, this Canadian expansion is, is really important to that, uh, that next stage of our business growth and the folks here in Alberta and, and Calgary have been extremely supportive uh, in that regard. Our next, uh, our farm in, in, in Calgary is about twice the size of our flagship facility in Guelph, Ontario. It's 75,000 square feet of, uh, of production facility. It will require significant capital investment and will result in roughly 70 permanent full-time jobs in Southeast Calgary. Um, the, uh, our world-class proprietary technology, which is a, is a blend of LED lighting, uh, water management, uh, airflow, automation, as I said, it results in 95% less water consumption, but also re uh, results in roughly 50 times the output uh, capacity of traditional agriculture. 
Uh, our model is immune to weather events and weather patterns, which allows us to grow the safe, clean product in an indoor environment. We're able to uh, eliminate the use of any chemicals, no pesticides, no herbicides. It also allows us to test the product. So before our product actually leaves the facility, it's been tested to ensure that it's safe, meaning there's no human pathogens um, within the product. Um, many Canadians don't realize that over 90% of this product category is actually imported from the United States and Canada. So part of our mandate is, is really to be hyper-local. We want to grow in market. We want to displace that import uh, as an import substitution. And, uh, and we really look forward to growing that product right here in Calgary. Uh, we do have a number of larger distribution partners in food service and retail. And part of the advantage of our location here in Calgary is it gives us access to major corridors to be able to disseminate that product to our partners and get that product throughout Alberta, British Columbia, and, and to some extent the prairies. Um, we are research heavy, so again, Calgary brings with it access to post-secondary institutions, community colleges, where we can engage and, uh, and continue to optimize our business model. Um, I'd like to thank um, the ministers, other government officials. It's been a great few days. The team at Invest Alberta has been absolutely amazing. Uh, the City of Calgary, Calgary Economic Development, the Planning Department at Calgary has been absolutely amazing. And in our business, that government support and acceptance really is critical to the successful uh, execution of our strategy. So I'd like to thank everyone for their support. Uh, I appreciate everybody being here today. And please remember, early 2023, watch the shelves for our product. Thank you to our speakers. That concludes the formal portion of our event. Uh, I know we have a couple journalists here in the room. Is anyone interested in asking a question? If not, we'll go to the phones. Seeing none, operator, can you please put through our first caller? Thank you. Yes, the first question is from Chris Varco, Calgary Herald. Chris, go ahead. Uh, yes, I have some questions for Jeff. Uh, Jeff, can you talk to me about where this facility is going to be located when you expect construction to begin and to wrap up? And what kind of jobs will you be, uh, be hiring for in the coming weeks and months? Yeah, so really good questions. Um, so construction has begun, uh, stripping and grading, site prep, uh, wrapped up this week actually. So it's in southeast Calgary, 108th Avenue southeast in the industrial area. Um, from a labor perspective, there'll be many sort of, uh, I guess, uh, part-time or temporary jobs created. Of the 70 that will ultimately be created, it's a mix. So roughly half, as a rule of thumb, would be um, engineers, plant scientists, biologists, uh, food safety experts, automation technicians, computer programmers, uh, data architects, and the other roughly half would be, um, would be labor that's in sort of the everyday labor, moving equipment around, uh, moving product, washing, uh, washing equipment after, after processing. Thank you. Chris, do you have a follow-up? Uh, yes, just to, uh, to follow up on that question with Jeff, can you talk to me about what the capital, how much are the capital costs for this project going to be? Um, how important was it to I get this incentive from the government of Alberta, and then just separately, why did why did you choose Calgary to, to build this facility? Yeah, all really good questions. In terms of the capital investment, that that in, in our early stage sort of technology driven business, we don't disclose capital investment overall because it's it's quite proprietary. Um, but I would say it's it's significant. And um, in terms of the the growth funding um, from from Invest Alberta. It's, uh, it, was, it was very important. It, it's a, a, small, a small component to our capital cost, but it's the signal that, that we're wanted. It's the signal that there's continued support um, from government. So, um, so I would say it was extremely important in, in that regard. And we, frankly, have considered different opportunities, different provinces, different regions in terms of our uh, progression across the country. And uh, the, the government here, as well as the, the funding, helped sort of put Calgary at the front of the line. Um, in terms of geography within Alberta, uh, as I mentioned earlier, access to R&D, post-secondary institutions, access to major infrastructure and corridors, and our large customers, we, we are a large-scale business, so we deal with food service companies, distributors, we deal with the large retailers, so access, easy access to their distribution centers is, is quite important for us. So all of that sort of led us into, into Calgary proper. Awesome, thank you. 
Operator, can you please put through our next caller? Lisa Johnson, Edmonton Journal. Hi, thanks for taking my question. I'm wondering also, just to follow up on Chris's question with Jeff, uh, what other jurisdictions were you considering in Western Canada before you decided on Calgary? Uh, I, I'm not sure I would necessarily disclose which provinces, but it's Western Western Canada. So, um, you know, there was, there was a couple different provinces we considered. And then once we sort of landed on Alberta being the preference, um, it really came down to Edmonton, Lethbridge, Red Deer, and, and Calgary. And as I mentioned earlier, the sort of the access to people, the access to infrastructure, the access to post-secondary institutions, access to customer distribution centers is ultimately what led into uh, the Calgary selection. Thank you. Lisa, do you have a follow-up? Yeah, thanks. This one's for the minister. I'm, I'm curious about the parameters of this granting program. Um, the government mentioned in the news release that uh, the funding will be dispersed when companies demonstrate that the projects have met certain milestones. Can you go into detail about what those milestones are and if this money uh, is going out the door, for example, once the facility is up and operating, and, and what are the, those late wage level uh, requirements? Is there so, a minimum there, or, or what are those requirements? So what we're looking to do here is, number one, there has to be a capital investment. So these are meant to be site competitions, so projects that can go to Alberta, it could go to British Columbia, it could go south of the border. It's site competition specific. So that's number one key criteria to be coming in the door. Number two is the capital requirement uh, that's, that's being invested in Alberta. That's one of the key metrics that we look at. And then the other piece as well is the labor force. So how many jobs are you creating both in construction as well as long-term permanent jobs? plus the skills that are required for those jobs. Basically, is this going to be you know, purely labor? Is this going to be you know, high-end skills jobs like we heard today, you know, people that with engineering jobs, uh, engineering backgrounds, and different skill sets as well? So that's factored in, and we look at you know, the average salary, and then we take a look at a scale to determine the, the, the scope of the investment and growth fund investment that's to be made. And when you take a look at as well, many jurisdictions have different types of programs to try and attract investment into their jurisdiction. Saskatchewan, Manitoba, uh, Manitoba in particular has a manufacturing credit. Uh, Alberta doesn't have the equivalent of that, but because of our lower uh, tax base for job creation tax cut that we did, as well as the fact we don't have payroll taxes, the overall environment here, we're very competitive by using the Investment and Growth Fund. Uh, if you take a look at the news release, the Investment and Growth Fund initial investments here for the first four projects is just over $9 million, and that's bringing in $845 million of capital. So just over 1% of the capital cost was what was needed to help draw those companies that could have gone anywhere in Western Canada or anywhere in the world to our home jurisdiction here in Alberta. Thank you, Minister. And that concludes our press conference for today. Sure.